Hi there, welcome to this video where you would get a quick start to my favorite IDE, Eclipse. If you are a developer or a programmer, then you'd be spending more than 80% of your time on your IDE. And I believe it's very, very important that you would need to be an expert on the IDE. So this video is to give you a quick start. I mean, I don't think you'd be able to become an expert in 30 minutes, but you can re definitely really go get good at it. So. The first thing that we would want to talk about is how to install it. We would give you a couple of words of caution, especially related to the operating system. Like the menus are a little different and the shortcuts are a little different. So we'll discuss them. And then we'll look at the two most important shortcuts, control space and control one. Then we would move into a couple of important Eclipse features, views and perspectives. And keyboard shortcuts help you to really get productive we would take a quick overview of a lot of keyboard shortcuts related to refactoring and also we'll take a look at how you can generate code using eclipse last but not the least we'll talk about save actions which is one of my favorite features in eclipse so let's get started um, the first thing is how do you install eclipse one of the prerequisites for eclipse is obviously java eclipse is actually written on in java so you need java to be able to run eclipse so you need to install jdk and you need to install eclipse you don't need a jdk to run eclipse jre is fine but you use eclipse mostly to write java programs so you would want to able to you would want to be able to compile them so you would need the jdk as well so we need the jdk and a eclipse install if you go beneath the link of this video you'd find a link to a installation guide if you look at the installation guide uh, it would actually take you through all the different steps in installing java and installing eclipse uh, installing java and eclipse is really a cakewalk it's not really difficult so all that you need to do is download uh, double click them to execute them and follow the instructions on the screen if you have any questions, you can use this installation guide. And also, we have created a small video for you called Installing Java, Eclipse and Maven, which is also, the link to which is also available in the description of this video. So you can use either of those. Like the PDF is a good start because you can read and follow the steps which is present in there. And if you have any questions, then you can probably watch the video as well. When you launch, a, launch up Eclipse, it would ask you for something called a workspace. So basically workspace is the folder where Eclipse would store all its settings. So in a specific workspace, you can manage multiple projects. So let's say I have a project for work. I have a personal project that I'm working on. I can either have separate workspaces for each one of them, or I can have both the projects in the same workspace. So workspace is a way you can group your projects and you can easily work on them. Uh, it's just a folder so you can uh, put in a f any folder that you have on your uh, local hard disk and click OK. We have now completed installing Eclipse um, and also we uh, launched it up. So what we'll quickly do is highlight a couple of words of caution. So whatever recording that we are doing is on a Mac system. So if you are on a Windows, the view would be a little different. So whenever, whenever we say Eclipse preferences in Windows, it would be at Windows preferences. It will not be in Eclipse preferences. So whenever I say Eclipse preferences in the Mac, you should actually go to Windows preferences in Windows. Remember that, I mean, whenever I, so basically it's that the preferences is not under Eclipse, but it's under window Windows. The other thing that you need to remember is whenever I say control in this uh, video, then the matching option in Mac is command. So if I say the shortcut is control T, then the shortcut in Mac is command T. Those are two important words of caution that you need to remember. Basically that whenever I use something called Eclipse preferences in Mac, it basically means window preferences in Windows. When I say control in this video, if you are on a Mac, then it means command for you. Next, let's get to two of my favorite shortcuts, control space and control one. Control space is one of my favorite Eclipse keyboard shortcuts. So let's say I want to create a big decimal variable. So all that I need to do is big decimal and type in control space. 
and it suggests what are the options that are available. So I just typed in big decimal and pressed control space. And now you can actually make sure that that specific import would be made. You can see that java.math.big uh, decimal is imported. So how did we do that? It's very simple. Type in the thing and just press control space. And it brings this up and just press enter and it would import the java.math.big decimal. So whenever you know the name of the class and you would want to import it, you can just say type it in and press control space. It would list the options and you can choose one among them. Eclipse has a lot of built in templates. So let's say I want to type in system.out.println and all that I can do is I type in sysout and press control space. And then it expands to system.out.println. And all that we did was type in sysout and system.out.println. And you can also type sysr and press system.r.println. Or let's say you want to use a for loop. So you can say furry and press the for each iterate over a array or iterable. So you can actually say for uh, on top of a list. Um, do something or actually it should be uh, element type so string uh, names name from a list of names I want to loop around it so let's say there's a string array names so if I want to loop around it I can do something of this kind of stuff so you just need to type in furry and type in control space and you can then the entire thing is populated. The other option is to type in main and plus control space and you can add in a main method quickly. So public static void main. So you just need to type in main and plus control space. You can try. So whenever you are uh, having like you would want to do something quickly, you can try the option control space. The next option we want to talk about is control one or command one. Let's just say I want to rename this class to string five test. So one of the things I would need to now do is to change the compilation class name. So this class name is string one dot when test dot Java, but I want to actually name it to string five test. So all that I'm doing is typing in string five test and pressing control one or command one. It would list out all the options that are available. So I can either rename the compilation unit to string five test dot Java or I can rename type to string one test. So I can take the easier option string one test. And now you'd see that the compilation error is fixed. Or if I really want to call this class as string five test, I can press control one and say rename compilation unit to string five test. So it's a easy way. So I don't really need to go to the file name and change it. So all that I need to do is press control one or command one here and it would take care of it magically. Command one or control one is one of the best shortcuts in Eclipse. So if you remember anything out of this video, I would recommend you to remember the shortcut control one or command one. It would help you in a lot of situations. Let's just type in something. So let's say I say new integer and press control one or command one. You can see that it's saying, okay, you're trying to create a new integer. So actually you should put a value to it. So you should either add an argument to match int or string. So let's say I add a argument 19 and again, I'm pressing control one. You can see now it says assign statement to a new local variable or assign statement to a lo new local field. So if I'm doing it a new local variable, it creates the variable in here. So it's a integer integer is equal to new integer of 19. If I press control one and uh, now I say assign statement to new field, you can see that it's actually trying to uh, create a field at the class level. So I mean, control one provides you a lot of different options. So for example, if I just highlight this particular thing and press control one, it's saying, okay, you have this option extract to a local variable. So if I say extract to a local variable, it would start creating a local variable. So I'll say string to print and press enter. So you can see, I mean, control one is one of my favorite shortcut control or command one. I mean, at any situation where you have an error, you just type in control one and you would see that Eclipse provides all the options that are needed available. Actually, all the options that are available to fix that specific error. So if you are actually remembering one thing out of this video, I would say control one or command one is the one to remember. The next thing we want to talk about is number five views. Eclipse has a number of views. So if you look at this specific thing, 
like this view is the one which is showing you the code which is present there are other views as well so you have a problems view where you can look at all the problems that are present so you can see that there is a compilation error so i can say okay it should have been string 5 test dot class that's the reason why it's giving me a compilation error i can go to the java doc view so java doc view would show the java doc for that specific class unfortunately there's nothing in there or you can go to the declaration view or you can see go to the console view to see the log which is printed so let's say i uh, ran this test so like let's say i do a right click run as JUnit test and i'm running this specific test you can see that all the log is printed into the console so all the thing which you do in system.out or system.r it gets printed out to the console this is one of the views if you want to see the list of views which are present you can just go window show view and there are a lot of views which are present the package explorer is what you'd see on the left it would help you in uh, navigating all the uh, package structure and also look at all the files which are present so you can see here there are a few files under JUnit example and source so the package explorer is the one which is on the left hand side the other useful view i like is the outline view so you can actually go to the outline view which you can see it in here window show view outline and then you can actually see what are the different methods which are present in there the outline view also clearly highlights a lot of different things so it shows that it all the methods here are public if it was a private method it would have been in a red uh, color the circle before it would be would have been red so if i want to quickly understand some class i can just go to the outline view and it would show me everything that is present in there if you want to see uh, the sub super classes of a specific class then you can use uh, the type hierarchy so it's window show you uh, you can go to type hierarchy or the easier way is just go to the outline and just say right click open type hierarchy or the same on the class so right click uh, open type hierarchy the shortcut is f4 so if you do a function f4 you can see the entire hierarchy of that specific class there are a lot of other views i would really recommend you to explore show view and see all the views which are present in here and you can even go to other and see a lot more views which are present in here the thing about these views is you can rearrange them as per your need so I, if i don't want the outline here let's say i want to move the outline to this i can do that I can move the console to somewhere else. You can just need to drag and drop and it goes to a different location completely. So the views are completely adjustable. And once you rearrange these views and get a specific layout for your screen, that's called a perspective. Perspective is nothing but how you arrange your views. Depending on what you are doing, you might want different views to be present. So let's say I'm coding a Java file or I'm writing a Java, I'm writing Java code, then probably I would need certain set of views. If I'm, let's say, running an application or debugging an application, then I would need a certain different perspective. Let's say I'm like uh, writing a JSP, the views I would want would be a little different. So Eclipse has this concept called perspectives, which is the next thing we want to talk about. So window perspective, and you can say open perspective and there are a lot of different perspectives. So you can go to debug whenever you're debugging. Debug perspective would be the best one because it would show all the things which are running. It would also show like the variables which are present and all that kind of stuff. If you're writing a Java program, on the other hand, I would go to a Java perspective. So I'm because this gives me all the things which are useful in when I'm writing Java code. If I'm if I'm trying to understand a specific project very quickly, then I can directly go to a perspective called the browsing perspective. So the Java browsing perspective will help you to understand the different things which are present. So I can quickly look at what are the things which are present. So I can get an outline. I can highlight a specific method. All the types packages would be listed in here. So this would be a really great way to quickly browse through a set of projects. So if I want to clear quickly browse through a set of projects and understand what is present in here, then the Java browsing perspective is really useful. I would recommend you to play around with the perspectives and see how you can actually adjust them as well. So let's say in this perspective, I don't really want members here. I want members here. I can just drag and drop and I can actually say window perspective and say per save perspective as and create my own perspective as well. So you can 
take one of the uh, standard perspectives and rearrange the views so that you can actually like rearrange the views in your specific way how you want it how you like it and then you can save it as a perspective of your own so until now uh, we looked at couple of important shortcuts control one control space uh, then we looked at views and perspectives so let's now look at some of the important keyboard shortcuts that are present in eclipse let's start with the mo most basic one it's the alt up arrow and down arrow so if i'm pressing alt up arrow or down arrow i can move the selected lines of code up or down so i can say i want to move these lines up or down so you just highlight the lines and press alt down arrow up arrow so it's basically pressing alt and it's pressing the down arrow or pressing the up arrow so alt and the up arrow or down arrow is one of my favorite key uh, keyboard shortcut because it helps me to organize my code better very quickly i don't need to do a control x and control v all that i need to do is do a alt up arrow down arrow and that's it the next important shortcut is something called control shift r it's used to rename a class so if it's if you are on mac it's con command option r so it's control shift r and you can rename this class so instead of string 2 test i can call this string 10 test the great thing is all the references to that specific thing also would be updated. So if string 10 test is used somewhere else, then you would see that all those classes would also be updated based on that. So all tests uses string 10 test. So it's also updated to use the string te test name. The same thing can be used to rename variables methods as well. So if I want to rename this thing, all that I need to do is control shift R or command option R and you can actually rename the variable all the instances you can see that all the like instances where that variable is used is also being renamed actual output is something so you can see that the same thing is being typed out so if you just rename it just press enter you'd see that the variable gets renamed so you can use it to rename variables you rename constants rename methods Whatever you would want to rename, you can go ahead and rename. And the most important thing is all the references to that method. So if this, like, let's say the as like if you're trying to rename a method and that method is being called from five, six different places, then all those places will also be updated with the new name. The other best shortcut I really love is Control Shift L. So if you just press Control Shift L, then it brings up a list of shortcuts that are present in Eclipse. You can see there are a lot of shortcuts which are present in here. So the shortcut is Control Shift L or it's Command Shift L in Mac. So just press Control Shift L and you'd bring up a list of shortcuts. Uh, if any of the shortcuts I'm talking about is not really working, probably there's a change in your specific version of Eclipse. The other interesting shortcut is Control T or Command T. So if you press it on any class, you can see the entire hierarchy of that specific class. So this does not really have an interesting hierarchy. So let's bring up something which has a lot of hierarchy, like something like hash map. And I'm going to press control T in here. You can see the entire hierarchy. You can see that hash map extends abstract map and abstract map extends object. And there are other things which are extending hash map. So you can see linked hash map and other classes which are extending hash map. So if you want to see the entire type hierarchy, then control T is one of the useful shortcuts, control T, command T. There are a lot of other useful control or command commands. So you just need to press control uh, slash and the code gets commented. So this is the slash I'm talking about. So if you press control and slash, the code gets commented. If I want to delete a line, I can use control D. So control D is to read delete a set of lines so i have commented code in here i want to delete it control d control d command d the other useful command or shortcut is use control l so you type in control l you can go to any of the lines in this specific code so i just it's a quick navigation kind of a thing so control and press uh, l it's that's it so you will be able to make it to the specific line that you would want to go to control q is a awesome command to just go to the last edit location. So wherever the last change was made, that's the place where control Q where would take you to. So let's say I'm changing this and saving it. So the last edit location is here. So if let's say I'm navigating somewhere else and press control Q, it would take you to the last location. So it's directly taking me to the test. 
So wherever I am, I don't really need to remember what was the last line I wrote. I just need to press Control Q. It would take me to the place where uh, the last edit was made. So anywhere, just press Control Q and it would take you to the right location. And the other important command is Control O. So Control O gives you an outline of this specific thing. So Control O, Command O just shows the high level overview of what are the methods which are present what are the like just gives an overview of the current class the um, another important uh, command is to execute stuff so the next command is uh, alt shift x so alt shift x would bring you the list of options that are present to run this specific thing so i can run this as a JUnit test so uh, that's basically what i'm doing right now so alt shift x and it brings up uh, different options to run that specific thing so if you have a main method in here, you can, you'll can you also get the option to run it as a Java application. So based on whatever the specific context of a specific class, it brings up the menu. So it's all shift X and then you can choose whichever one you'd want to use. So run Java test, run Java application, or I mean, if it was, a, if there was an ant build in this project, you can run that as well. If you have 10 minutes of time, I would really recommend you to play around with these shortcuts that come up when you press Control shift l or Command shift l There's a lot of shortcuts which would come up. Just try and take a quick look of at, at them and see which one of those you'd be able to take and remember. I, I really believe that understanding the keyboard shortcuts will really increase your productivity by more than 10%. So if somebody has a good understanding of the keyboard shortcuts and I think they'll be 10% more productive than other programmers. Next we would look at an, uh, a tricky option or a useful option in Eclipse called the breadcrumb trail. So there's a icon in here you can see toggle breadcrumb. So you can actually use that icon to turn it on and you would see a bar like this which shows a quick overview of where your specific class is. And I can even use this for navigation. So I can say, show me all the things in here and I can go to string five test. So if you're new to Eclipse and you're trying to get started, this might be a good way to get started. And you can actually click on any of these and navigate to the other things as well. So this kind of serves as a quick navigation tool to something. You, do, you don't always need to go to uh, the project explorer and do things down there. So this serves like a good option. So this is called the breadcrumb trail. Uh, the other option is also mark occurrences. So you can see that whenever I highlight a specific thing, specific variable, it shows all the places where it's used. So this is good whenever I'm trying to understand something, I just need to highlight that specific thing and the uh, like all the occurrences of that specific variable are pointed out. So you can actually toggle that on and off here. It's called toggle mark occurrences. The next shortcuts that we would be discussing about are the refactoring shortcuts. Always remember the refactoring shortcuts are at Alt plus Shift plus R. So it's Alt Shift R. So if I press Alt Shift R, it would try and rename this variable. That's something which we already discussed. If you want to bring up the entire refactoring menu, you need to press Alt Shift T. So if you press Alt Shift T, then you would bring up the entire refactoring uh, thing. So I can say change method signature or I can, you can see that it's bringing up the, uh, like an option to change the signature of that specific method. Or you can actually extract a local variable, another one. If I want to extract this thing to an local variable, I can use the extract local variable. The easiest way to get that would be all shift L. So all shift L is to extract a local variable. So if you have a value and you want to extract that to a local variable, you can use all shift T. And you can also extract it to a constant by pressing Alt Shift T and say extract constant. Now this would actually create a constant. So you can see that it creates a public static final. So it's Alt Shift T and you say extract constant. And if I don't want the constant to be here, I can do Alt Shift I and inline the constant. So you can see that the constant gets, all the values of the constants gets replaced. So it's called inline. So let's say I don't want to have a variable here I just say all shift I and then it would inline that variable in. So all the extract variable things that we did are disappearing. So these are kind of the reverse operations. So I can either extract the variable or I can inline it by saying all shift I. If you want to extract this line of code to a specific method, then you can have the variable all shift M. I can call it print something. So all shift M is the way to extract and the same reverse would work here. All shift I is to inline again. So the code from that method 
will be replaced in here. I could have actually chosen if I wanted to Alt Shift I. I could actually say oops, Alt Shift I, and I can say replace all invocations, and also it would delete the method declaration. So now you'd see that the method also disappears. So this is a useful way to refactor. So all that I need to do is select the line and select the lines which I want to move to a separate method and then like press Alt Shift M. These are some of the useful um, refactoring methods. Eclipse also can be used to generate a lot of code. The shortcut is Alt Shift S or it's Command Alt S in Command Option S in Mac. So it's Alt Shift S and then you can choose what you would want to generate. So one of the things you can generate is the getters and setters. So I can say generate getters and setters and choose the ones for which I would want to generate the getters and setters. So it would create the generate like setters and getters automatically. So it's Alt Shift S and choose the generate getters and setters. The other thing you can also do is generate constructors. So I can say Alt Shift S and say generate constructors using fields. So it would create a constructor for those two fields. And the other thing you can do is also generate a two string. So Alt Shift S and generate two string. So this would actually ask you how you would want to generate the two string and just press OK. You'd see that the two string method would be generated. So ideally I would not want it here. I could have chosen this option in the menu earlier, but okay. So uh, Alt Shift S is a great option to generate a lot of code. So generate constructor using fields, generate two string. It can also generate hash code and equals methods. So one of the good things, I mean, one of the best practices with Java is that whenever you override the equals method, you have to override the hash code method as well. So you can do both of that. So it created a default equals and a hash code method as well. So these are different uh, things which are present in Eclipse to be able to generate code. So we generated a two string, we generated constructors, we generated getters and setters. And uh, those are some of the important things that you would want to learn. And if you press Alt Shift S, there are a lot of other commands which would be present in here. You can try them as well. So one of the important things is to format. So if I want to format the code, uh, then I can press Control Shift F. It would format the entire code. Last but the but not the least of the Eclipse options is Eclipse preferences and save actions. So you, if you are on Windows, it's Windows preferences, save actions. You can turn this on. There are a lot of options which are present in the save actions thing. One of the favorite actions of mine is to turn on format source code. So what would happen if I turn on format source code is whenever I, like let's say I'm pressing a save here, it would automatically format the code. So I don't really need to format the code each time. You would see that it gets automatically formatted every time I do uh, some change which uh, results in a formatting loss. So Control Shift F is this formatting shortcut, but I don't really need to press that. So I just say Control S and save it and that's it. It would automatically uh, do the uh, formatting of the class. So that's uh, save actions. It's at Windows preferences or Eclipse preferences and at save actions. So formatting is one of the things if you don't want to format all lines, you can choose to format only the specific edited lines. The other thing you can choose to do is organize your imports and you can also set how you would want to organize it. And there are a lot of other additional options you can configure in here. So uh, you can set your code style and uh, you can uh, decide how you'd want to uh, react on unnecessary code, unused variables, unused methods and things like that. So those are really useful things. I mean, save actions is one of my favorite things in Eclipse as well. One of the things which we are doing at in 28 minutes is to give you a clear roadmap of what you would want to learn to be a Java web developer. So there's a Java learning roadmap and trends video, which is linked at the bottom in the description of our video. And it would be a really great uh, video to look at to understand the roadmap that we look at for the typical Java developers. We explain the different trends which are happening, including the fact that, for example, Spring Boot is now the most famous frame, I mean, most popular Java framework to develop RESTful web services or to develop microservices. So we discuss trends like that. And also we discuss what are the different things that you need to learn as a developer. So if you want to learn Spring Boot, what are the steps that you need to take? If you want to learn Spring, what are the steps you need to take? And we have defined a complete learning roadmap, which you can see on the screen right now. And it's a great tool for you to be like understanding where the industry is heading 
and deciding what you would want to learn next. In this video, we took a quick look at trying to get better at Eclipse. So we started with looking at a few shortcuts, then we looked at views and perspectives, and then we discussed a lot of shortcuts related to refactoring and code generation, and we ended this video by talking about save actions.